I have a new video for you guys because Demi Lovato was only 15 years old when she went through one of the most traumatic experiences of her life. She has recently come forward in her new documentary about how Disney failed to protect her from the co-star who harmed her. Today we're going to talk about what she went through and what kind of monster could do this to her. So let's get into it. <music> You guys all probably know who Demi Lovato is, but if you don't, she is a 28-year-old actress and singer. She primarily focuses on her music now, but she got her start from Disney and acting on Disney kid television shows and movies. And today, we're going to talk a little bit about the trauma that went on behind the scenes and what Demi is still coping with today. Because there was a bit in episode 3 of her documentary, Dancing with the Devil, where she mentioned mentions an experience at 15 years old and during this time she went through something with a fellow co-star that will haunt her forever and now she is brave enough to speak out against it so I am going to talk about what she went through today and who could have done it because there are several guys out there that I believe could have been the one to do this to Demi. Let's start off by talking about what happened because like I said this was mentioned in the third episode of her four episode series on YouTube. And if you haven't watched it, you probably don't know what I'm talking about. I mean, honestly, the little bit about this in her documentary flew by. I mean, they talked about it for like, what, two, three, maybe four minutes max, and then they just kind of move past it. And I feel like as a viewer and someone who, you know, loves Demi Lovato, that I was like, wait, hold up. Like, what did you go through? Because it seems like this event really was the moment that kind of like started her downfall. You know, I mean, I I've always thought of Demi as always like kind of going upwards and just improving and being a great artist. I mean, I don't think there's ever been a point where she wasn't like selling well or wasn't doing well musically. But at this point in her career, she like was peaking and then kind of went down in her personal life because she went through this traumatic experience with a fellow co-star and this co-star never suffered any consequences. So Demi just had to deal with it and she was around this person for some some time. She never named the offender in her documentary, but we're going to talk about who we think it is. But before we do that, let's talk a little bit about the incident itself, because she describes it as a consensual experience that turned traumatic. She was hooking up with this guy, and she told him, hey, this isn't going any further. She is a virgin, and she doesn't want to lose it this way. But that did not matter to this guy, and he did it anyways. Demi said that she internalized this, and she told herself it was her fault because she went into the room with him, and she still hooked up with him. This happened between the year of 2007 and 2008, when she was 15 years old. And going through this incident with this male co-star really damaged Demi because she, at this point, was a very pure, happy-go-lucky Christian girl, and she was actually part of the Purity Ring group, which was a bunch of Disney Channel stars who wore Purity Rings like all of the time. This group includes Miley Cyrus, Jordan Sparks, Selena Gomez, Demi Lovato, and of course all of the Jonas Brothers. Which you guys will see throughout this video that this person who harmed Demi might very well be one of those Jonas Brothers. But we're going to walk through all of the guys that we suspect it could be. Anyways, this encounter with that male, you know, in conjunction with her belief of purity and trying to stay clean and pure for her image, really messed with Demi. And this actually led her to having an ED. On top of that, she was also kind of like harming, like just, oh God. She was doing things to her body that obviously no one should do, but it was the only coping mechanism she had at the time. She was quoted saying, the Christian Southern girl in me didn't see it that way because doing this with a guy was not normalized as a child or in the South. She then continued in this segment of the documentary and shares that she actually told people about this and the guy never got in trouble. She said, and you know what? Screw it. I'm going to say it. My hashtag me too story is telling somebody that someone did this to me and they never got in trouble 
for it. They never got taken out of the movie they were in. And guys, that is a huge piece of little evidence right there that she has said in her little bit about this because it gives us some clues to who this man could be. In the documentary, they also included two old interviews from back in the day when Demi was, you know, on the set of Camp Rock and working as a young girl. And in these interviews, it's really sad to see how she responds to this person because she acknowledges that even though she's young, she's gone through some very terrible things. She said in these little interviews that she is more aware of just life and people and the way the business works. She also said that she thinks she's able to protect herself a little more. More. Keep in mind, this is like a 16-year-old Demi Lovato star saying this to adults, pretty much just like sugarcoating what she went through on set and accepting it and justifying it by, you know, claiming it's just part of the business, which is never okay. And that's why this whole like child star industry is just so extremely toxic. Before we talk about who this monster could be, because she did not name him in the documentary because I believe that he is also a famous person. Um, plus, back in the day, she didn't want to even come forward to the press because he was supposedly so big that he wasn't going to be taken out of any movies or, you know, had any repercussions. She was just starting off her career at that young age. But let's talk about what she was doing back in the day so that we can figure out who this person is. And again, guys, in this video, I'm not trying to, like, like, I don't know, char criminally charge someone with what they've done to Demi, but we're going to just go through what information she's given us and talk about who it possibly could be because whoever this is is just out here in Hollywood probably being praised still even though they've done some awful things um maybe just to Demi but also maybe to other people if they're capable of doing this so let's talk a little bit about when this happened because Demi is currently 28 years old and she was born in August so that means she was 15 between the age of August 2007 and August 2008 at this point in her life she just finished production on as the bell rings which was filmed in texas and premiered august 26 2007 so it's safe to assume that she is 14 at this age it seems like she has a little break between august and december and actually in january 2008 is when she starts filming for camp rock i do want to go ahead and just say guys i do believe that this incident happened during her camp rock days but let's go ahead and talk about the other projects going on at that time so camp rock was filmed January to March 2008. Then from March 14th to April 18th, 2008, they filmed Princess Protection Program, which was another project that Demi worked on. Then from July 4th, 2008 to December 20th, 2008, she was on the Burning Up tour. So obviously we're approaching late 2008 and this is when she would be turning 16 years old. A lot of people also believe that she could have gone through this horrific event during during the production of Sunny with a Chance, which I try to do some research on production dates. There is literally nothing out there, I even on Wikipedia. But someone on Reddit found a list for a casting call that had the date September 3rd, 2009, which would have meant that they were doing castings at this time and it probably wasn't in production when she was 15. And just to cover our bases, let's talk about what she did after this time, because in 2009, September through October, she was filming Camp Rock 2, The Final Jam. And then finally, through August 7th, 2010 to November 13th, 2010, she was part of the Jonas Brothers Live and Concert Camp Rock 2 Press Tour. Oh my gosh, that is a mouthful. So now that we know what she was doing back during this time, let's talk about the information we have from the documentary, what she has given us. So like I mentioned earlier, she said she was 15 years old. So that means it happened either between August 2000 2007 or August 2008. She also mentioned in the documentary that about a month after the horrific event happened, she actually reached out to the guy who did it to hang out because she kind of wanted to redo the situation and give herself a feeling of control, which she says she ultimately regrets. 
She also shares that she had to see this person all of the time after these two incidents, which could mean a couple of things, that they either worked together on projects or they had to do press together. And then finally, when she came out and spoke about it back in the day, nobody did anything about it. She specifically says that they were never taken out of the movie they were in. So that right there is a huge clue because that means they were part of the production that Demi was a part of as well. Oh god, before we get into the actual guys, I'm just like, oh, it makes me, like, I'm, I feel so bad for Demi. Like, if you guys watch the documentary, which I definitely recommend, she has gone through so much. And to think that this guy is just out here living his best life after he did this to her really sickens me. And I hope that, like, this documentary helped, like, give her some closure or some comfort around all of these situations. But for other viewers, it's left us feeling a little bit icky about our past, you know, watching these shows and being huge fans of Camp Rock and things like that, because is it true that the Jonas Brothers or these other guy actors did this? I mean, I'm not too sure, but I want to walk through the potential guys that I believe could have done this to Demi. This is all going to be alleged and, you know, speculation, but also I'm just going back on receipts that we have available to us to try to fill in the puzzle. So don't send any hate to any these people I don't actually know if they did this to Demi she has not said that but I have a pretty good idea of who I think it is and before we go through these suspects, I do want to say that even though Demi was harmed by this person, does not mean that this person was out of her life because a lot of people who go through these situations end up staying in communication with their attackers because it's just so overwhelming, especially if they are Disney co-stars together. Like how on earth do you get out of that situation when you are so wrapped up with these guys in your career and if you speak up about it, which she clearly clearly did not feel comfortable doing, she would have probably been ripped apart by the press. I mean, at 15 years old, she was just starting off in the scene and being taken seriously as an artist, so to have a big scandal come about probably wouldn't have looked good for her. And it's so sad to think that because, like, the I guess the energy back then just wasn't the same. I feel like nowadays, if you come forward, you are going to be supported and praised, but to think that Demi was, like, so fearful to even share this, and when she did, nothing happened. Of course, she never felt comfortable speaking out. So let's go ahead and talk about the Jonas Brothers because everyone thinks that it is them. And before we get to Joe, I want to talk about Kevin and Nick first. Because Kevin actually was dating his now wife, Danielle, back in the day. And I don't think that Kevin would have done this to Demi because he was 20 years old. He was in a very serious relationship and it doesn't seem like he would have had any interest, you know, of being with her. Again, that doesn't obviously write him off completely, but when I go back and look at the time span to see that he was with Danielle makes it seem like he was pretty secure in his own relationship. As far as Nick, there's not much evidence that proves him not guilty. But if you think about Nick and Demi's relationship, you might be a little confused on why he would have been the one to do this because they are very, very close friends. And honestly, I don't think that she could be that close to someone who did something so bad to her. I mean, I I understand again that they these people will communicate with those attackers to, with those people who have done these things to them over time sometimes they just can't get away from it but Nick and Demi are like this and I don't think that he personally did anything to her but Nick Jonas has said some questionable things in the past. Like, for example, he shared before that he has done drugs with both Miley and Demi Lovato, so that's not a good look there. And actually, in one of Demi Lovato's previous documentaries, Nick was featured, and he shared a little bit about Demi and Joe's relationship. He claims it became, quote, really complicated, and he was trying to build a bridge between them, but then the blow-up happened. And I don't don't know what the blow up is supposed to mean but maybe just a huge you know fight in their relationship I mean if he did these things to her of course she was holding that in and she really didn't know how to express it or to get help or anything 
But let's go ahead and talk about the possibility of Joe Jonas because there is a lot to unpack here. Joe had a lot going for him and he was a huge money maker for Disney. So it would make sense that even if Demi did come forward about this, no one would remove the lead actor from his own movie. The two went on a six month North American tour to promote their movie and separate albums a couple months after Camp Rock wrapped. In between the movie and tour, they both worked on separate TV shows for Disney, but these programs were both shot at the same studio, Hollywood Center Studios located in Los Angeles. Between Camp Rock, the various tours, and the Disney shows they both were filming at the same studio, these two had a lot of time together. Demi has also been quoted back in 2018 by multiple media outlets that she fell in love with Joe Jonas on the set of Camp Rock. The two officially began dating in 2010, which was two years after the first Camp Rock movie, but they only ended up dating for two months, something that Joe claims was his choice to break up with Demi. If Joe did this, it would have been a huge deal because he would have been 18 at the time and she would have been 15 years old. The only piece of evidence that kind of clears Joe's name was from an Ask Me Anything, where he shared that he lost his V-card in 2010-2011 to his girlfriend Ashley Green. Does that fully clear his name? Obviously not. But does anything I've even presented really, you know, make him guilty? It doesn't. And would it make sense that Demi would rather not name him because she is so intertwined with their family and, you know, being tight with Nick and just, you know, being I guess associated with them for so long it might be really damaging to everyone if it ended up being Joe but also this guy seems like he's the most likely candidate to have done this obviously Joe would be in the wrong for what he did I mean he was 18 years old but something I do want to acknowledge and something I want to start stressing more and more is that we need to stop placing minors like 14 15 year olds with adults inside movies where they're 22, 24 years old, and they have kissing scenes or romantic relationships because, okay, uh, she was 15, he was 18 here. So it wasn't like the, the biggest age gap, I guess, but still he is an adult. She is a minor. So it'd be nice if they could get an adult to play that role so that they have two adults kissing. And I've seen even worse situations. I think one is like Miranda Crossgrove was like 15 years old with like a 22 like year old and iCarly. So, um, obviously not good. And I've been thinking about making a video about that soon so um, about just like some other situations involving that but let's go ahead and talk about our next contender when it comes to this awful person. So we've talked about the Jonas Brothers and now we need to talk about Cody Lineley because this is a guy that Demi actually used to date back in the day when she was 15 and they have tons of photos together. I mean in 2017 Demi actually congratulated Joe on his engagement so maybe she doesn't have a grudge if it was him but it also just doesn't really add up. Another possible suspect would be Rashawn Fegan and he is actually from Disney's Shake It Up. And he was probably working on set with Demi around the same time as she was working on Sunny with a Chance. They both were on Camp Rock together, but it doesn't seem like they actually spent as much time together as other people. Because, like I said, they were shooting two different productions for Disney. He was doing Shake It Up, she was doing Sunny with a Chance, but their production sites were over an hour away from each other, so they weren't around each other when filming. That would kind of go against against the fact that Demi said that she was with this person like all of the time. Another possibility is David Henry and he again is another Disney star who was on the show Wizards of Waverly Place. He was Selena Gomez's co-star and it seems like Demi would have met David through her best friend Selena because back in the day Selena and Demi were super close. David would have had his opportunity to do this to Demi during the production of Princess 
Protection Program because Wizards of Waverly Place was filming at the same time. This was also around the same time that Selena Gomez and Demi Lovato had their first falling out. And some people suspect that it could be because of what was going on with David and maybe Demi trying to take down David and have him, you know, fired from Disney for what he did to her. But obviously the Disney execs would rather protect the criminals and the disgusting people out there than their own talent. The final person who I think it possibly could be is a man named Jordan Francis, and he was part of the Camp Rock crew. He really didn't do anything else back in 2008 through 2010. I mean, Camp Rock was his main deal, but he was one of those cast members who went on the Camp Rock 2, the final jam promotion tour, and there are tons of pictures of him from behind the scenes with Demi. So he was a guy who she was constantly around um, doing promotions with and could have been someone that did this to her. And I don't, I don't think that Demi wants this person to be named or she would have named them, but there also needs to be justice here. And to think that he, you know, did this to her means that he could have done it to other people as well. I recently posted a video about Allison Stoner and she has shared that some things went down on the set of Camp Rock, which are horrific and have traumatized her her entire life. So back in 2018, Allison tweeted out to Seventeen Magazine and said, You misreported. I wasn't up for Hannah Montana. I had my own show, a spinoff of Raven, that competed against Hannah Montana during the same pilot season. If you want real drama, ask what Disney did to me on Camp Rock that I've had to keep a secret this whole time. Which, again, why has she had to keep it a secret? Like, what happened? Why would it be secretive? And again, this is back in 2018, but it was getting some more attention. So she, quote, retweeted it. She wrote, It seems that this 2018 tweet is getting some attention. If I give you, the public, information, I need to know that you are on the side of believing minors, not using our trauma for temporary amusement. If so, say yes, because I already have the first article ready to publish. So obviously some things went on during the set of Camp Rock, and there needs to be some like clarity to this so that people can move on and move past this. I really don't like believe in trying to protect these people who have committed such horrendous acts that have led people like Demi Lovato to the point where she's had EDs. She's had, you know, she's tried to harm herself. Like just so many horrible things has happened because of that one event. And I think it's so selfish to try to protect a Jonas brother or one of these people just because you like them or because they seem cool or innocent or good people. Because just because they seem like good people does not mean that they are good people. And at the end of the day, I'm always going to stand with those survivors. And I am so proud that Demi has stood up against the situation. I just would hope that this story can be translated into some action. Like, maybe Disney can stop pairing adults with minors. Nickelodeon could do the same thing. Um, there could be so, so much more done. I mean, even creating an open space where these people can talk about this. It doesn't have to lead to 10 plus years of silence over something horrific you went through and just feeling that you have the world against you. And that's what happened to Demi. She came for it. She tried. She did what she was told to do when these things happen and nothing happened. So this person, whoever you are out there, Joe, Jonas, or not, they need to really apologize to Demi or to just, I don't know, to get out of here because that is some Harvey Weinstein energy that I do not approve of. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I actually have some P.O. Box items to open. This is actually both from the same person I noticed, so I'm going to go ahead and open them. They're from Sarah H. And it looks like she is located in the U.S. Actually, she's not too far from me. And sorry if my eye starts watering, guys. My allergies have been killing me. I need, I need your guys' advice. If you have some advice on allergies, like, oh gosh. So again, she sent me two packages that look very, like, <clears throat> They look like they're the same shape, kind of. So I'm really curious to know, like, which one do I open first? Like, it doesn't really say. So let's go ahead and see. Um, last time I was using this knife thing, I, like, really hurt myself. So I'm trying to point it away from myself. A lot of you guys were like, point it away, point it away. Okay, here we go. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. Why does it smell so good in here? Okay, so it looks like the letter is in this one. But let's go ahead and just get the other box open because you guys know it's going to be a struggle. Um, oh. Okay, Sarah, wow, this is so legit. Okay, ooh, okay. 
I'm like, I'm sorry guys. Some people like to watch the struggle, so I'm sorry that it's like two minutes of me fighting with this box. I did get my vaccine yesterday, which a lot of people have thoughts about. Oh my gosh, okay. So it looks like we have two notes here. I'm not too sure which one to open first, so let's go ahead and just open this one. Okay. Hey Sloan, how are you? I want to send you some of my coffee slash products from my new established coffee company. Oh my gosh, I am allergic to coffee. I know that's probably the worst thing to say at the start of this, but my boyfriend really loves coffee, so he will definitely enjoy this. Um, so I apologize for not making that clear to everyone. I am allergic to coffee, the bean itself. Um, it's a fun and independent space-themed coffee company. Oh, it's called Moonscape Coffee Co. And I'm just starting out, and I haven't had many followers on social media or websites yet. Oh, COVID has been a struggle mentally and financially. Actually, oh, okay. Yeah, so if you please share this with your fans. Yes, of course I'll share with my fans. I recently started watching your channel and I have to say thanks for being a great person and for always um, talking about important issues. Oh, thank you so much. And thank you for reading this. Sarah H. Oh, I really appreciate that. And again, I know I, I can't like drink coffee, but it doesn't mean I cannot not appreciate it. And my boyfriend's gonna be so excited. So here is a sticker. The brand looks really cool. And again, everything will be linked below if you want to go check it out and support. I know most people do drink coffee. Oh, this hat is legit though. Look at this. Yes, my hair has been a total mess, guys. I need to get a haircut. What do you think I should do? Should I cut my hair all off? I don't know. Um, okay. <gasps> wow, this is what smells good, though. I was telling you, I was like, something smells really good, and it's literally the coffee. Like, oh my gosh, this, my boyfriend's gonna freak out. Like, Mark! I need to show him. It's French. I think he's gonna love this. Like, this is such a legit pack of coffee. Mark! Should I FaceTime him? He, like, can never... Ugh. One thing about Mark is that I'll call his name and I'm like, I'll be two feet from him and I'll be like, can you not hear me? Like, how do you not hear me? I'm literally yelling your name. Um, I want to show him the coffee though, because I think he'll really like that. Ooh, so this is one box and let's go ahead and see the note from this box while I try to call Mark. He's literally in the other room and he cannot answer. Hey, come here. Why? I just want to give you this thing. Bye. Okay. Hey Sloan, I want to send you a package of coffee from Moonscape. Oh, so this is also a second note. Um, I'm sending you this as well. Oh, I have an Etsy shop where I sell soap called Handmade Soap and Candles. Oh, I established in 2020. That's awesome. See, this is something I can really enjoy. I'm currently in grad school studying to become a teacher. I love being creative. My goodness. Look at this big pack of coffee. That's what it is. Come on camera a little more. That looks so you don't have to. You don't have to look any type of way. But this is isn't that good. It's French. It's from someone's space-themed coffee company. I love that. Wow. Do you like this type of coffee? Yes. Oh my gosh. The cold brew blend. I was just thinking today I used to make cold brew. Well, this is like a lot, isn't it? Like, this is like a huge package. Oh, uh, well, thank you. Say thank you to Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah, he's going to be enjoying that coffee, so. I'll be sipping this tomorrow. She's currently in grad school. She's studying to become a teacher. She loves she loves being creative, and after suffering from anxiety, oh, I don't like the word suffering. I like surviving. And after surviving anxiety this past year, this has become sort of an outlet for me to get rid of some stress. So she also sent me some soap and some things from her company. Oh my gosh, she sent me so she much stuff does. here. Really I know, up. she's like a businesswoman over here. <gasps> Look at these little candles. Oh my gosh, this smells so good. Smell. I smell loaded candles. Smell. Oh my gosh, it smells like a like one from like Yankee or something. <gasps> and these soaps. Look. Oh my gosh, we got, oh, smell this one. This one smells so good. Oh, it gives me so excited. This one's like whisk, rustic whiskey. Oh, this one's rustic whiskey. This, the coffee one smells so good. Is that what the coffee was? It smelled yeah, good too. It good. This one's light brown mountain soap. Mm. Oh my gosh. The whiskey soap? Okay. Oh, try that one. There's so much good stuff in here. What is going on, guys? So everything will be linked below. This awesome small business, Sarah. You are like thriving out here. Let's see what this thing is. This one is probably my favorite, the light brown mountain smell. I think so too. It smells so good. It smells like really it's like a good earthy smell. Oh my gosh, this is a bamboo soap holder. <gasps> you are so nice, Sarah. I could totally Oh my god, that's so, so cute. Cool. So totally. Oh my gosh. Yes. Oh, thank you so much, Sarah. I will list both of your businesses below. Guys, definitely go check it out. These are awesome. Whew, I really appreciate all the stuff. <laughs> and uh, thank you guys for watching this entire video. I will see you guys in a new video soon. Want to say bye? See. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye.